So here is a very typical example of a sinking fund problem. And very often what happens in business is people buy expensive equipment to do their business, but after a while it needs replacing. So Nick has just bought a packaging machine for 92,000 Rand. He wants to replace it again in six years. Okay, so the first question is how much will he be able to resell it for after six years? Because after six years he wants to buy a new one, but he wants to sell the old one to get some finance to buy the new one. Okay, so here we go. How much will he be able to resell it for after six years if it depreciates on the reducing balance method at 21% per annum? Okay, so we know that the, the how will we calculate it? It, first we need to know the formula so the first thing we start with is our formula which formula will we use well the future value of a depreciation so that's the present value the reducing balance method is 1 minus i to the power of n okay next is our stock taking okay let's see what values do we have in our formula we have do we have our future value? No, that's what we want to calculate. Okay, do we have our present value? Yes, it was 92,000 Rand that he's bought it for. Okay, do we have our, this is our growth or decay rate. In this case, it's 21%. So it's 21 over 100. And finally, do we have the number of times it appreciates? It's 21% per annum and it is for six annums, six years, so that's six. And now we can go and replace into our formula 92,000, one minus 21 over 100 to the power of six. Let's go calculate that. So we have 92, one, two, three times in our brackets, one plus 21 sorry it's 1 minus 1 minus 21 over 100 close the bracket to the power of 6 okay is equal to 22364 and 5 cents 22,364 and 5 cents. That is what we are going to be able to sell it for after six years. Now for the second part of the question, to replace a packaging machine with new will be more expensive due to inflation. Inflation on a packaging machine is expected to be 7% per annum. How much can Nick expect to pay for a packaging machine in six years time? So this is inflation. Inflation is growth, always compound growth. So this time we know we're working with the formula. Future value is equal to the present value 1 plus the inflation rate to the power of n. Okay, in our stock taking, let me just put ST for stock take. In our stock take, do we have the future value yet? No, that's what we want to calculate. Do we know the present value of the equipment? Yes, it's also 92,000. In this case, I represents the inflation rate, which is 7% per annum. So it's 7 over 100. And finally, N is the number of times inflation will be compounded and it's 7% per annum so that means it's since it's six years it would be six we can substitute this into our formula 92,000 1 plus 7 over 100 to the power of 6 and let's just calculate that one so 92,000 times in our brackets 1 plus this time 7 over 100 to the power of 6. There we go. Our answer is 138,067 and 19 cents. 138,067 
and 19 cents. That's how much the new one will cost. So it should be clear to you that if he sells the old, okay, and for the old, how much did he get? 22364.05. So for the old, he gets 22364.05, comma 05. If he sells the old to buy the new, okay, so here's the new, the new one we saw will cost. 130.67 and 19, 138.67 and 19 cents. Okay, to buy the, he will still need more money. Obviously, he needs more than he's going to get for the old. To make up what he will need, he starts a sinking fund. Okay, how much should be in the sinking fund after six years? Now, that is how much will he need still after six years he's going to need 138 but he's getting this 22,000 so in the end how much will he have let's calculate that again so we have 138067.19 minus that's the new minus the old is 22364.05 and the answer I get 115703, 115,703.14 cents. This is how much they should be in the sinking fund. And now you can see if this is what I have saved up and this is what I'm getting for my old equipment when I add these two values together I will get what I will need for my new value so finally we get to the point of this whole endeavor because now we ask if Nick invests every month starting in one month's time into the sinking fund that earns interest at 7% per annum compounded every month how much will he have to invest every month so that he will have enough money in the sinking fund after six years? So this is clearly an annuity. We're talking about an annuity here because we are investing every month. It is a recurring investment. So the formula for this one now depends. Is Do we want to know the future or the present value? In this case, we want to know the we. It's not what, what we want to know. We do know the future value. The future value of this sinking fund must be 115. Okay, so that is our future value. So we use this formula. Future value is x1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 over i. There's our formula. And just don't get confused. We're using the same a variable i and n the whole time but each time they have different values okay so do we know the future value this time we do know the future value this is what we want we want a hundred and fifteen thousand in our bank account after six years okay there we go that's the exact amount I want okay do we know the interest that we're going to earn yes we're earning 6% interest, but it's very, sorry, 7% interest per annum, but it's very important. We are not working with years this time. We are working with monthly installments, so we need to work with months, okay? So it's 6, 7% per year, but 7% needs to be divided with 12 because we're working with months and also with a hundred so I'm just going to divide with twelve hundred okay seven percent over twelve hundred now n remember n does not represent years it rep represents how many investments were made and this in this case we invest every month for six years that means it's six times twelve okay which gives me a total of seventy two investments Finally, do we know our recurring investment? 
No, this is actually what we want to go calculate. How much must Nick invest monthly? So if we substitute all of this, we get, uh, let me use a different color, we get 115703,14 is equal to X is unknown. In the bracket, we have 1 plus our interest rate is now 7 over 1200. Okay, to the power of 72 minus 1. All of this is being divided by 7 over 1200. So if I have to solve x, I need to multiply both sides with the denominator and divide both sides with this big bracket because it's multiplying x. So in the end, I'm going to skip a step or two for time's sake, I'm going to have 115703,14 that is being multiplied with 7 over 1200. In other words, this is multiplying that side and this is dividing that side. And dividing 1 plus 7 over 1200 to the power of 6 minus 1. Okay, that is a big calculation in your calculator, so be very sure that you are punching in very correct. So there I have my 1157034.14 that is multiplied, and in a bracket, please put it in a bracket, 7 over 1200, close that bracket, and now divide, and again, divide with a bracket, so we make our bracket, and another bracket, 1 plus Sorry, I put a 6 here. That shouldn't be a 6. That should be a 72. 72. Okay. 1 plus 7 over 1200. Close that bracket to the power of 72 minus 1. And my answer in the end is 1297. One, uh, one, one two nine seven if I round off my answer comma six eight comma oops, sorry six nine comma six nine there we go this is how much he must save every month for the next six years so that in the end he will have enough he will have that much in his bank account to buy the new equipment well, I hope you understood this example clearly. Good luck in trying this on your own now.